Well, good morning and welcome. Greetings in the name of Christ from all in the Longford group of parishes. My name is Reverend Simon Scott, the minister in charge of the group, and I greet you this morning in the name of Christ. Wherever you're joining us from, far, near, abroad, or at home, you are most welcome as we join in the presence and worship together of our holy God. We're scattered throughout the world. But in that there's a great blessing, because in each of our locations we can stand and share the love of Christ with all who we meet. So as we gather the greeting in the name of Christ, grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. We have come together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and our thanksgiving. To hear and receive God's holy word, to seek the forgiveness of our sins, and to pray for the needs of the world, that by the power of the Holy Spirit we may give ourselves to the service of God. As we come together, open yourself to the presence of God, to his joy, to his provision, to his love. Join the responses with vigour. Sing loudly as our hymns play, as we join in worship together. Our opening hymn, hymn number 72, Jesus is King. As we begin our time of confession, we remember the words from Daniel chapter 9. Compassion and forgiveness belong to the Lord our God, though we have rebelled against him. Let us then renounce our willfulness and ask his mercy by confessing our sins in penitence and faith. And the response to Father forgive us is save us and help us. God our Father, we come to you in sorrow for our sins, for turning away from you and ignoring your will for our lives. Father, forgive us, save us and help us. For believing just as we wish, without thinking of you. Father, forgive us, save us and help us for failing you by what we do and think and say. Father, 
forgive us, save us and help us. For letting ourselves be drawn away from you by temptations in the world about us. Father, forgive us, save us and help us. For living as if we were ashamed to belong to your Son. Father, forgive us, save us and help us. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness. And keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Well, we come to our family talk time of our service. And you join me in one of my favourite places, in the garden, in the greenhouse. At this time of year, there's so much life coming to be. Seeds are popping up all over the place. And bringing life, bringing joy to us all. Well, I don't know if you ever stopped to think about seeds. They come in nice little packages, and when we open up our packages, inside, depending on what we're growing, is a huge array of different seeds. These are a spicy salad collection. And I don't know if you ever stopped to think about these small little seeds that we have in our, in our packets. In here, in each of these tiny little specks in my hand, which you can barely see on the camera, are enough life, enough joy, enough provision to poke a little root called a radical, poke a little shoot called a plumule, and pop up through the soil, put out its first seed leaves, and grow its own food to grow into a big, big plant. In here, in these little specks in my hand, is everything a plant needs to grow. Well, in us, God has given us all what we need to grow. He's planted a seed in us, his word, word made flesh in Jesus Christ. He's planted in us his spirit, his presence, so that whatever we do, we can grow strong, healthy and fulfilled in him. He's given us everything we need to know. And shortly in our, our sermon, which Reverend Christian is going to bring to us, we're going to think deeply about that and think about how life comes in the presence of God and God's sacrifice for us. Well, it's time for our family song now, kindly given permission by Colin Buchanan. This is a good one. It's an active one. So up on your feet and enjoy. Oh look, here comes God's word, our God has spoken Come now to hear with your heart wide open The prophets, apostles and Jesus his son God's revelation, light of the nations Here comes the wonderful word of God Letters and papers and books pass away But the word of the Lord is everlasting Here comes God's word, how God has spoken Come now to hear with your heart wide open The prophets, apostles and Jesus his son God's revelation, light of the nations Here comes the wonderful word of God Perfect and trustworthy, radiant and bright Treasure and the truth that's firm forever Here comes God's word, how God has spoken Come now to hear with your heart wide open The prophets, apostles and Jesus, his son God's revelation, light of the nations Here comes the wonderful word of God With all Here comes the wonderful word of God. God's revelation. 
creation, light of the nations. Here comes the wonderful word of God. Here comes the wonderful, here comes the wonderful, here comes the wonderful, here comes the wonderful, here comes the wonderful word of God. Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto our path. O oh Lord, your word is everlasting. It stands firm forever in the heavens. Let us then receive the word of the Lord. So may the light of your presence shine into our hearts. This morning's Gospel reading is written in the Gospel of St. John, chapter 12, reading verses 20 to 33. Now there were some Greeks among those who went up to worship at the feast. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, with a request. Sir, they said, we would like to see Jesus. Philip went to tell Andrew. Andrew and Philip in turn told Jesus. Jesus replied, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. I tell you the truth, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. The man who loves his life will lose it, or the man who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, my servant also will be. My father will honour the one who serves me. Now my heart is troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour? No. It was for this very reason I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and will glorify it again. The crowd that was there and heard it said that it thundered. Others said an angel had spoken to him. Jesus said, this voice was for your benefit, not mine. Now is the time for judgment on this world. Now the prince of this world will be driven out. But I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all men to myself. He said this to show the kind of death he was going to die. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Ed, thank you very much for leading our reading for this morning from John. Uh, my name is Reverend Christian Snell. I'm the minister here in the Edgewoodstown group of parishes in the diocese. And I'm speaking to you today from Longford Methodist Church, where I'm also serving as the minister and who we work closely with in the diocese. As we come to God's word, let us pray and ask his help. Father in heaven, in this time of quiet, we come before you and we ask that you would speak to us through your words so that we might understand the importance of why Jesus died on the cross for us. Please um, nourish us and feed us, we pray in his name. Amen. Now, in this time during COVID-19, we have never paid more close attention to data and statistics. Ever since the virus came to our shores, we have followed its progress very closely. 
We've um, looked at our mobile phones, if we have the COVID tracker on, on, on it. Now there we will find a, a range of information that we look closely into every now and then. The daily numbers, the cases, rising or, or decreasing. And sadly, the number of deaths, the R rate and the positivity rate, the number of people in hospitals. And lately we've been looking very closely at how the vaccine is making its way around the island. Now, in just a few days' time, we will remember Good Friday, the day when Jesus died. And indeed, today is um, the mark, uh, the beginning of Passion Sunday, of Passion Tide. But I wonder, as we think about the death of Jesus, is that something that we have really considered? Is it something that we've really looked into carefully? As carefully as we look into all sorts of other things in our lives. Martin Luther, the reformer, one said that no man understands the scriptures unless he be acquainted with the cross. Long before the day that Jesus died, he contemplated his, dead, his death. And he wants us to be acquainted with it, which is why in John 12, he explains the importance of his death to those who were listening. And he wants us to understand three things about his death. Three things that stands out in this reading for us today. Firstly, that the death of Jesus is something that must happen. Jerusalem was a place that Jesus visited often to um, attend festivals and um, around Passover, like he is in this passage. But on this occasion, his visit will be different because he announces in, in verse 23, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. The hour was another way of talking about Jesus' death. And indeed, the hour was the climax of Jesus' death. No one wants to talk about their own mortality because it's an admission, isn't it, that we are small and insignificant. But not so for Jesus. He says as well that his death, that by through his death, he will be glorified. His death won't show how small he is, but how great he is. His death must happen because it is the climax of God's plan and through it, Jesus will show how great he is. Jesus shows why his death is something that must happen in, uh, by saying it in another way in verse 24. I tell you the truth, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a seed, but if it dies, it produces many seeds and we know that Jesus' death is necessary because of that word unless unless the seed that um, from the from the grain falls into the ground you won't have any fruit and it's the same with Jesus death his death is something that must happen because without it no one will reap the benefits and we are given a taste of what that benefit is in verse 25 the man who loves his life will lose it, while the man who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life, Jesus says. You see the benefit? That if we identify ourselves with Jesus and his death, then what we reap is nothing less but everlasting life in heaven that begins now and will continue for all of eternity. It is a wonderful benefit to know. Now, very often we do things in our lives because we want to, but sometimes we do things in our lives because we have to. To drive our cars, we must have a license. To enjoy a picturesque garden in the spring, we must mow the lawn and look after the flower beds and pull out the weeds. These are things that we must do. And Jesus had something in his life that he had to do, and that was to go to the cross to die. His death was necessary. Now very often the death of Jesus is, is seen by those who oppose um, Christianity as something that is barbaric and cruel and they don't want to accept it. They say it's unnecessary. How can a loving God treat his son in such a barbaric way? But the truth is the cross is cruel and it is painful. But that doesn't mean that it was something that we sh that it is something that we should dismiss or be embarrassed by. Rather, we should remember that as Jesus approached his death as something that must happen, it shows us that 
he was committed and determined to carry out God's plan. His death was no accident or plan B by God. And that should give us great reason for confidence in Jesus as we follow him. But it also leaves us with a challenge. And that challenge is, is, um, is um, explained by Jesus in verse 25 and verse 26. Jesus reminds us that just as he had to die, so those who are recipients of that eternal life must also be willing to die. We must be willing to consider that this world is not all that there is, that there's more to life in this world, that beyond the grave there is an eternal life to enjoy and our hearts should be set on it. Now one way in which this can be evident in our lives is in Christian service. Jesus says, whoever serves me must follow me and where I am my servant also will be. My father will honor the one who serves me. I notice that Jesus says that following him and serving him goes hand in hand. So often we think that service is for those who are very keen or really kind of gung-ho Christians, but it's for everybody if we are followers of Jesus. So how have you been a servant this week? And where can you be a servant to others as you think about the death of Jesus? Jesus explains the second important aspect of his death in verse 27. Jesus faced, secondly, his death with anguish. As Jesus came to the hour of his death, it is something that brought him deep anguish and trouble. And many commentators are in unanimous agreement about verse 27, that it, that it is John's equivalent of, the, of Jesus' experience in the Garden of Gethsemane. It is reduced in our, in our reading today to one verse, but that in no way makes it less significant. Because Jesus said, Now my heart is troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. No, it was for this very reason I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Jesus, in these words, reveals his humanity. Even though he is the Son of Man, a title that, 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 that Jesus used to, to refer to the power that he has, the authority that he has, all of that was available to him. But he still willingly faced pain and suffering for us. This was more than just physical pain, because in his death he would also be abandoned by God his Father as the sins of the world are carried on his shoulders. It is, it is for this reason that Jesus prays and he says, Father, save me from this hour. But amazingly though, as Jesus faced anguish and struggle about his death, he also had great clarity. He was able to see that, see God's eternal purposes um, at work, even as he struggled. Knowing how much pain and suffering he will face, he remembers that the hour of his death is precisely the reason why he came into this world, to be a substitute for human beings, so that we can escape God's anger and punishment. He says, no, it was for this very reason I came into to this armor. And we know that God is pleased with Jesus' approach to his death, even though he was agonizing over it, because God wonderfully affirms his servant in, those, um, in this passage, in verse um, 28 and verse 29, as a voice comes from heaven and speaks to, to Jesus, affirming him in the work that he will do. So as we give thought to Jesus' death today and into the next number of weeks leading up to Good Friday, we must remember that it, is, it was anguish for Jesus. As we will sing in the hymn today following the sermon, how deep the Father's love for us, how great the pain of searing loss. The Father turns his face away as wounds which mar the chosen one brings many sons to glory. Jesus contemplated, contemplated deeply about these things, and so should we. Do we recognize that the cross was not an easy path for Jesus? It involved anguish, 
suffering and pain. And being reminded of his humanity is also of some comfort to us today, especially as we live through this pandemic. We have someone who identifies with us, who understands pain, who understands worries and, and uncertainties and suffering because he endured it himself. Jesus wants us to understand that his death, that his death was one that he faced with anguish. And then lastly, Jesus' death achieves important things for us. Now, last week, the 13th of March, was the first anniversary of the killing of a woman called Brianna Taylor in America. It was a major news story last year and an incident that propelled the Black Lives Matter movement that um, took place over the summer last year. Brianna Taylor, if you don't know, was a paramedic, but in a tragic sequence of events, her life was cut short in a, in a police shootout in her home while she was sleeping. And since her death, the family has been campaigning for justice and a change in police procedures. Because of her death, police are now banned from carrying out a knock, carrying out no knock warrants in, in, um, in Louisville, Kentucky. Now, while a tragic and sad event, her death did achieve something. And Jesus' death also achieved important things, even greater things than what Brianna Taylor's death achieved. Jesus explains what his death achieves in these verses. Firstly, in verse 31, now is the time for judgment on this world, Jesus says. The world here represents all those who are opposed to Jesus. And at the cross, in his death, Jesus will expose those who really don't believe in him. It will almost be a confirmation that those who have opposed him in his ministry and rejected everything that he said and did, well, they will reject him even as he dies on the cross. And secondly, his death will achieve something else. Now the prince of this world will be driven out, Jesus says. The prince of this world is Satan. He's the evil one who, whose aim is for us to not follow God but him his lies, and, his, and, and to live in his domain of darkness. And when Jesus died, he defeated Satan on the cross so that he no longer has control over us by his lies and his darkness. And Jesus' death will disarm Satan. And when he does return again in glory at his second coming, he will completely eliminate Satan forever. That's wonderfully good news. And lastly, Jesus says his death will gather people. He says in verse 32, But I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all men to myself. He said this to show the kind of death he was going to die. On the cross, Jesus will expose those who really don't believe in him, but he will also draw people in. At the cross, people will be confronted by the deep and and amazing love of God in Jesus Christ, and it will draw them in. Is that an idealistic dream? Well, in this passage, we can say no, because as we saw in the reading, the very first words that we read is that the Greeks were looking for Jesus. The, 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 the Gentiles, those who are not Jews, were looking for Jesus. Jesus is already drawing his people in. The cross will gather all men, Jesus says. It doesn't mean all men will be saved, but that all kinds of people will be drawn to Jesus through his death. People of different races, color, language, different backgrounds, young and old, male and female, rich and poor, all number of people will be drawn to the Savior. And that's what his death will achieve. And praise God, that it has done that. Now, as we listen today, my prayer is that you will count yourself as someone who has been drawn in. As you hear Jesus explain his death, may it give your heart a reason to be thankful that he has drawn you in and given you eternal life. You should fill your heart with gratitude and joy today. But it must also remind you that being part of God's family comes with responsibilities and demands. Jesus later on says in the reading 
that we should walk before him, before the light, before the darkness overtakes us. Are we walking before Jesus in the light? Because our lives have been touched by his death. Is his death what motivates you in service to others? Is his painful and costly death, as you remember that, something that motivates you to put sin to death and live in a way that pleases God in your life, in every hour and every day as the weeks go by? But for others who are listening here today, maybe you have never given Jesus' death serious thought. And later on in these verses, Jesus says, what we should do is that is you. He very simply says, put your trust in the light while you have it, so that you may become sons of the light. Have you responded to Jesus in that way? As you hear Jesus' death explained by him from his own words, there's a prompt in you one thing, and that is to trust him for your salvation. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, at this time when we consider Christ and his death for us, we thank you for the fact that he was determined and obedient as he approached it, so that we might be given eternal life. We thank you that the suffering and the pain that he endured on the cross was for us as he stood as our substitute. And we thank you that through his death our enemy Satan is defeated and your love gently draws all kinds of people to Christ. Lord, as we consider all these things today and into this next two weeks, help us to know the weight of our sins who cause his pain. Enable us by your help to follow your way even when we find it hard. Help us to give our lives in service of you and of others or because of your death. For Jesus' sake. Amen.
Do you believe and trust in God the Father who made the world? I, I believe, believe and trust, trust in him. him. Do you believe and trust in his son, Jesus Christ, who redeemed mankind? I, I believe, believe and trust, trust in him. Do you believe and trust in the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God? I, I believe, believe and trust, trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This, this is, is our faith. faith. We, we believe, believe and trust in one God, Father, Father Son, Son and Holy Spirit. Spirit. We turn to prayer and let us pray with confidence to our Lord Jesus Christ who was lifted up on the cross for our salvation and who knows our needs. Lord Jesus, help us to give ourselves to you as you gave yourself for us. Help us to live and work to your praise and glory. We pray for the mission of the church that it faithfully preaches the gospel, both in our own parishes and to the ends of the earth. Enable us, through our online services, to reach those who do not yet know you. Lord, hear our prayer, and let our cry come unto thee. And we pray for peace in the world. We remember Syria, Yemen, Iraq, and we pray also for all those places where there are forgotten conflicts. We pray for a spirit of reconciliation and respect to grow fostering peace within them. Lord, hear our prayer and let our cry come unto thee. We pray for those recently returned to school and for those still studying at home and online. Bless the work of all who are teaching and learning. Be present wherever education is taking place, ensuring that there is cherishing and challenge, reassurance and comfort as there is need. Lord, hear our prayer and let our cry come unto thee. We pray for all who suffer, the poor, persecuted, the refugees, and for all in danger, that they may be protected. We pray for the sick, those in hospital and those at home, especially those known to us. And we remember all those ill or affected by coronavirus. Bless the work of doctors, nurses, medical practitioners and scientists, that through their skill and insights many will be restored to health. Bless the giving of vaccines, that many will be protected. Comfort the bereaved. May all who are fearful, anxious and in any way distressed come to know your peace. Lord, hear our prayer. And let our cry come unto thee. And for those we are injured or offended, let us pray to our Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, in your mercy, hear us and give us the grace to amend our lives and to further your reign. And God our Father, in your love and goodness, you have taught us to come close to you in penitence with prayer, fasting and generosity. Accept our Lenten discipline and when we fall by our weakness, raise us up by your unfailing mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we pray the collect for the fifth Sunday in Lent. Most merciful God, who by the death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, delivered and saved the world, grant that by faith in him who suffered on the cross, we may triumph in the power of his victory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And gathering all our prayers and praises into one, we are bold to pray. 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And now we sing the hymn known as The Servant King, number 219. From heaven you came, helpless babe. Thank you for being with us here this morning in our corporate worship from the length breadth of not only the diocese but of the world as we gather in worship of the living God who is worthy of praise. As we step out into each of our own communities, we remember we're all carriers of God's word and we're all to sow God's word wherever we go and the love of Jesus which we celebrate in the highs and lows of Holy Week which we're on the edge of. 
as we step into the world some words of blessing. Christ give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourselves, to take up your cross and follow him. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with you and all who you hold dear this day and evermore. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen.